this video, we shall spend a few moments looking at the Yermihani Christos Church. That church, of course, is about 25 miles north of La Libela, and it's not one of the classic 11 churches. It is not monolithic or semi-monolithic, but emerges from a cave. But we'll talk about that later. Before we do this, before we look at that church briefly, let us see what's going on in other parts of La Libela. And so I was able to get some shots. The population is estimated to be about 12,000 people, but during January, when you have a great deal of pilgrims, that definitely expands and some of the pilgrims stay over and so on. Remember, La Libana is considered to be a holy land. The houses seem to fall into two models. You have the rectangular houses and then you have some circular ones. We'll see more of the circular ones later on. Well, here in our view, uh, some students who are in one of the shifts for the polytechnic. And this is a officially called a Technology and Vocational Educational Training Institute. And we have various uh, shots. And of course, I put myself there <laughs> close to the entrance as if I'm going to school. Well, it's table tennis time. And I should point out that um, this is a pay to play venture. Well, the truth is that I won some games and I lost some as well. And now it's coffee time. Ethiopia, the country that domesticated coffee that we see the ceremony in every region of the country. And La Libela is no exception. So I'm going to soon enjoy my coffee. Notice the popped corn is actually from sorghum, not maize. And I got to know about this for the first time. Well, La Libela has its restaurants. Well designed and decorated culturally. Is this the next football team, the next national football team, or what? Well, the church is made of different materials. The white section is actually marble, whilst wood and also clay would make up the rest of the materials. The tomb of uh, Imrani Christus. And around what time did he die? He died in uh, at the last of the 12th century after he finished all the church. Quite a bit space. So the now after you are priest, then you become bishop. Bishop like that. Yeah. Okay, maybe six years more. Yeah, six years. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice guess. <laughs> nice guess. Yeah. Okay. So this church, what does the, the cross symbolize? Yes. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ in the top. Mary. Yeah. Saint Mary. Saint Gabriel. Saint and Saint George when he kills the dragon. St. George is very important to the church. Okay. And there are nuns, six nuns in that structure. Okay. So you give services here too. To Saturdays speak. and Sundays. Yeah, both, yeah. So we are looking at uh, some of the artistry associated with uh, this church that was constructed in the 12th century. And took ten years to construct. The ten years will be to construct the whole oh, yeah. complex. All the yes. Ahead we have the place for communi communion, etc. There's a tunnel, is there? Inside the a tunnel leading to the dwelling place, the monastery, really, the monastery of the six nuns. They prepare the holy bread and holy water. Okay. Four of the structure is covered by um, bamboo. You said mountain bamboo. Mountain bamboo. Yeah. Well, this church is called the uh, Yamirhane Christus Church. Note some alternative spellings. I've seen uh, the two as indicated bear in mind the fact that the church was basically founded by and named after Yamirhani Christos and Yamirhani Christos by the way is uh, a saint in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church he was probably the fifth, subject to new information, the fifth uh, priest king in the Zagwe dynasty. The Zagwe dynasty, of course, would be established south of the heartland of the early Axumite Empire. Well, one important thing to note about the church is that it's built in, around, and within a cave, a very huge cave. The accounts suggest that there was a lake within that cave, and that that lake would actually be dredged in some way. We know that the church itself would be associated with a complex. So you have a, the palace of King Yamir Hane Christos or Emperor Yamir Hane Christos if you bear in mind the fact that he would preside over the Aksumite Empire. King Lalibela would succeed, not immediately, but about two regimes after uh, King Yamirhane Christos. So we can say that the classic churches, the 11 classic churches associated with the Lalibela region or the heartland would have been inspired in one way or the other by churches such as these. And by the way, it's not the only church in the environs of La Libela. You have um, actually a 6th century church. Bear in mind though that most of the churches, the older ones, would be found further north. And they would date to the 5th and 6th centuries. Some are still being discovered according to my colleague, 
Professor Ayeli Bekeri. One of the interesting things too about this church uh, is that it's made of uh, marble, wood and clay. Clearly making use of the local materials. So the, the complex also has paintings on the wall. Very iconic um, representations of the theology. So in the next uh, few videos, we are going to look at one or two of the other churches in the heartland of La Libela, the region. Bear in mind that these would be constructed after this particular church complex.